Hello, everybody. It's Soppy and Marco dish on the movies. And today, we have two more movies to do in these this kind of horror, scary category. And this today, we're doing Dracula, Prince of Darkness. It's a Hammer movie. And it came out in 1966. And, uh... I just will read a list of just the main people in the movie. Of course, Christopher Lee plays Dracula. And then we have the Kent family. That's two brothers and their wives. Barbara Shelley plays Helen Kent. Charles Tingwell, Alan Kent. Francis Matthews, Charles Kent. And Suzanne Farmer, Diana Kent. Kent, sorry. Then... We have Andrew Keir, who plays Father Sandor, and Philip Latham, who plays Clove. Okay? Now, this is the way, this is what happens. Ten years before the story begins, Dracula had been destroyed <coughs> by Van Helsing, and they show a few clips from the movie called Dracula featuring it's horror of Dracula. Oh, okay, it's called Dra the horror of Dracula. Dracula is the British title because oh. in America they thought that people would confuse it with Bela Lugosi's Dracula, oh. so they changed it. But originally it is supposed to be Dracula, but sorry, see I didn't see that. I prefer horror of Dracula. Um but anyway, these la these last few scenes of the movie featured his demise so they show those first it's now a decade later but local villagers still act like Dracula is still around so every girl that dies or maybe every person that that wasn't made clear to me but in this movie it was a young lady and they still they want to stake her or her mother's having a fit because she says what are you doing? And she's protesting. And fortunately, a local priest named Father Sandor is riding his horse nearby. And he intervenes and stops them. Okay? He's from a nearby monastery and he rides around in the area. Okay. So, and he was, re he reminded the villagers of Dracula's demise a decade ago, and he kind of, he kind of spoke disdainfully to them, like he thought they were stupid. Okay, later at the local pub, four travelers from England called the Kents, remember those two brothers and their wives? They expressed their desire publicly who travel around the local countryside. Father Sandor comes in and overhears them and invites them to his monastery. But wherever they decide to go, stay away from Carlsbad Castle. Of course, this is where the movie starts irritating. No, that's the, that's it's the, no, it's Carlsbad, but but it's Dracula's castle. They call it Dracula's castle. They don't say Carlsbad Castle. So. Okay. Okay, well, they stay away from Carlsbad. Yeah. And Carlsbad is where Dracula's castle is located. Yeah. Like a few other horror movies I've complained about previously, the four travelers, the Kents, turn into dummies. Why do I say that? Because they end up Carl's bed in Dracula's castle, ushered in by Dracula's new favorite lackey, a man named Clove, who, by the way, <laughs> isn't a vampire. <laughs> I hate it when the main characters act stupid. It put me off for the rest of the movie. Fortunately, half of them act smart. I'll eat smart food for dinner, I guess, and grow some better and they eat smart, smart newer food. brains. <laughs> okay, Marco, take it away. Uh, well, 
Are you ready for me to just... I mean, I mean, a lot of Hammer fans, they think that this movie is like the best Dracula movie or like the second best one, and then they go and trash uh, Dracula 80, 1972. Well, it's pretty funny when, when you think about that because this movie sucks. It's terrible, uh, mostly everything about it. And now, here, here are the reasons why, because a lot of people are going to click off. There was one person who I think unsubscribed because we didn't like Infinity War. <laughs> and I mean, that movie was terrible, but that, that movie, like, everyone liked that. So, it really shouldn't matter if one person doesn't. Because we had a lot of reasons for why we didn't like it. And there's a lot of reasons to not like this movie, too. Because in this movie, first, let's start off. There is an assistant named Clove, a, a butler or whatever, and Clove. And he never existed in this universe before. In horror, excuse me, in horror of Dracula, he never existed. And now all of a sudden, this assistant is there. And apparently there's specific instructions. If there's a group of four people, of uh, two men and two women, then you have to serve them this type of food, and you have to put them in these rooms, and then you have to do this and this. Like, really? He really left those kind of detailed instructions? And if so, when did he have time to do that? When he was uh, getting killed by Van Helsing. Also, I think that every character in this movie kind of sucks. Because, this, well, yeah, every, every character. Because, let, let's just break it down. Number one, you have the, the monk uh, <clears throat> leader. He's so, he's so dumb that he doesn't even figure out at the end that Ludwig... Uh, is is one of the bad guys and that he helped Dracula get in his monastery that's how stupid he is and so he's he's a terrible leader he almost let his entire monastery get overrun by vampires and he's terrible he didn't even figure out uh well he I just I, I don't understand why all of a sudden, instead of Van Helsing, we have this random monk guy. That's what I really wonder, because he he's just there, and all of a sudden, they, they have all this knowledge about vampires. And they well, he had a book. A book. He had Who a big, book like from? an ancient book. You know what he should have done? He should have said... Uh, Van Helsing wrote this book and it didn't do very well at all so he's really poor now and I have one of the few copies of the book that would have been really really uh, interesting I what? thought it was some kind of ancient book like an ancient manuscript you know it used to be you know monks I'm, I'm did the books and hand did the pages I'm suggesting what to do oh I don't care what their lame excuse was. Well, I don't know. We, we really don't know. I just remember him bringing out this gigantic book yeah. and opening it up. Don't you remember how uh, at the end of the Dracula book, it said, like, you may not believe this story, but it was all based off of true events. And no. And we didn't... You don't remember that at the end of the book? That, that, that oh, like, the Maybe. book, they were acting like they were going to publish it, and it all actually happened. Well, it would have been really cool if Van Helsing had published a book, and it did horribly, and he became poor, and, and so this monk leader is one of the people who has his book, because Van Helsing went around to this town that lives near Dracula, and he gave the books about vampires to them because they need it the most. But of course, he didn't do that, obviously, because the townspeople suck too. And we that's were a, stupid and afraid of 
yeah. something that wasn't even there, a non-existent fear. That's they another. Knew because it's a small town, they knew what had happened. That's another thing about this movie is that the townspeople are just as bad as the ones from the Gorgon. Remember those stupid townspeople who are who are lynching somebody uh, after no evidence that they did anything? Yeah, they're just as bad as them. And so anyways, I, as I said, he, he's a horrible leader. He does tell the strangers to stay away, but obviously... They took stupid pills overnight at the end. No, obviously he knew that they were going to go there, and so I personally think that he should have arrived at the castle when Dracula first uh, in the morning when they have that confrontation, and I think Dracula should have uh, killed him, and that would have been cool. Because in the movie, he's like, I knew you were going to do something stupid like that, or, you know, typical uh, travelers, whatever. And Not listening to the local locals who are kind of speaking from experience and knowledge about the place and history. Let's talk about the female characters, because we're big fans of good female characters on this channel. We're not fans of... Uh, bad female characters that are made to support agendas and uh, stereotypes. We're fans of actual female characters. And in this movie, you have two stupid ones. You have one of them played by a good actress, and she, at first in the movie, she, she doesn't, she, she laughs off the monk guy and she says, ha, ha, ha. And, you know, why why can't we go there? And, and then she basically encourages them to ignore them. And then immediately when they get to the castle, she, she completely goes uh, 360 and changes her mind and says, oh, why are we here? Let's leave right now. And so that's horrible character. And... Then when she becomes a vampire, she's not threatened at all. She All she does is bite someone on the arm or hand or whatever. That's it. Well, I mean, one she, of the, she's that weak. One of the uh, things that you brought up was that Christopher Lee eyes as a vampire are red. Yeah. And her eyes are normal. Oh, yeah. And they never change That's throughout another... the whole movie. That's another thing, is that with all these uh, Dracula movies, Christopher Lee's eyes are always red, and all of the other people's eyes are just uh, the same as usual. And so that really uh, pisses me off. And then you have the Cary Grant guy. He's the leader of the stupid people who goes to the castle after being told not to. And then you have... Marco, what Marco means by that, the younger brother, if you close your eyes, he sounds exactly like Cary Grant. I mean, yeah. exactly like him. And I, I did look him up to see, well, are they from the same area? Are they related? No, they're not. So I don't get it. I mean, he sounds so much like him. It's weird. And then you have the blonde, the blonde female character. Is why? She's stupid. Uh, she, she basically... Basically, her only contribution is uh, shooting the ice, which kills Dracula, and he dies like a uh, like a cat, like another word for a cat. He because he he just he just falls in the water and goes like oh no it's water because you know f fuck that that's Marco. terrible Marco. ew. A vampire dies by drowning in a pool of water? Ew! And the water is the castle moat, and the weather has caused it to freeze. And when she shot the ice, it broke. And he, she shot all... Oh, no, wait. Didn't the priest take over and shot all around? And, uh... Because I think she was trying to shoot him or something, and so he was a better marksman. He took over. Somebody did. 
and shot all around, and uh, he fell in. Yeah. And apparently... whoop de do! Isn't that great? A vampire just falls in the water and dies. Weak. And then you also have... And, and uh, but let's let's stay on the blonde girl first. The blonde girl is a horrible love interest. She's boring. She doesn't have any character to her, and she's she's just kind of like a follower. And then you have the the husband of the red haired guy, and he doesn't listen to his wife at all, and. Because at, at night, when she changes her character completely, he just ignores everything she says. And uh, so I, I thought he was dumb, too. And then let's get to the uh, the star of the show here. Or should I say the the privileged, uh, the, the privileged uh, bratty actor, uh, uh, Dracula himself, who uh, doesn't talk because... He thought the lines didn't sound good enough, so he refused to talk. And there are several moments in this movie, and by several I mean every time Dracula is on screen, where he just stands there and stares, and everybody stares at each other, and you realize, "Uh uh-oh, he's supposed to be talking right now, isn't he? And he won't talk. Dracula will not talk. So I think that's very <coughs> immature of an actor to do that. Even though I think the lines were probably terrible. Uh, who cares? You know, do, do your job. And if, if you don't like it, then uh, improv. Of course, they wouldn't do that back then. I know that, but that's just my solution. <coughs> so what do you think, Safi? If I covered all the points about this trash movie. Oh yeah, but I, Father Sandor's, uh, I thought he acted very savvy, at least he sounded like it, outside of the monastery about vampires, but he became inept and short-sighted about this crazy person who isn't called Renfield, but Ludwig, who Marco did bring up, but he is based on the same guy, Renfield, Renfield, who was kind of like Dracula's slave. He's living at uh, the monastery because they found him. Helping out Dracula. He's helping Dracula when Dracula and, becomes alive. And they just say, oh, take him back to his room. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they're totally oblivious that, oh, oh, maybe they better be watching him. So that's kind of surprising. And you know what? I'm very harsh on this movie because the the, peop- <coughs> the people who praise this movie so much then go and uh, rate other Dracula films uh, by by you know letting the, letting the other ones take the fall for problems that this movie had, like they criticized Dracula eighty nineteen seventy two by saying that the music is uh, terrible because it's 70s music. What about this movie's music? This movie's music is boring. The horror of Dracula had amazing music. Literally all they did for it was go D-R-A-C-U-L-A. That was the music. They would play notes like that, like Dracula sound out his name and in this movie it's like complete trash music and then you have Dracula has risen from the grave and that movie is basically this movie but good because in Dracula has risen from the grave I think that it was supposed to be a direct continuation from this but they just ended up not doing it because in that one there's a priest in town. Remember, Safi? Uh-huh. There's a priest in town, and he's really... He's a, he's a huge wimp, and but he, he helps Dracula. And so he's like the Renfield, but he's fantastic. He's very uh, wimpy, 
and creepy and at one point he he takes the metal cross off of a, the main girl's uh, chest. Sophie, are you yeah, with I'm us? Listening. And then the monk guy, I think that he was supposed to be the priest. Remember in Dracula was risen from the grave, the that 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 badass priest who is fighting him. Who doesn't like the atheist boy and he he's I think he was supposed to be the monk leader. So Okay, well I just wanted to, since Marco has already talked about Dracula's demise in this movie. Yeah. I, don't I just care. wanted to say we did I, I wanna say how he even remember he was not even in the picture. But what happened when Clove brought those dum dums in the castle <coughs> actually invited them in. They wandered around. Well, the older brother, when it was time to go to bed, the older brother, well, they heard some noises. So the older brother gets up and he gets out, goes out of the room and he starts investigating and looking around in somebody's a castle in these rooms. Like, it's like none of his business. But he's poking around. Well, uh, Cloak kills him and then he holds him up over the the uh, coffin where um, Dracula's ashes were and his blood revitalizes him. That's how he gets alive. And then the wife, his wife, of course, this is the older, the older, <coughs> this is the older couple. I'm not saying real old, but you know what I mean. She goes looking. Well, Chloe comes and says, your husband needs your help or something. And, oh yeah, and that's another thing. The man, uh, because she she opens the door for him, she leaves it up wide open. This is the, the same guy who uh, an hour earlier she was calling him creepy, uh, covering her face from looking at him, saying that he's ugly and he's, he's weird. And this is the same guy that she's opening the door for now and that she's uh, willingly going with him. That's another... <laughs> another bit of stupidity on both of their parts which drove me crazy of course she he turns uh, Christopher Lee who's now vampire the silent vampire uh, for the whole movie he makes her into a vampire and of course she has a lot to say and she also uh, yeah she talks she talks a lot she does her job and she doesn't have red eyes yeah. so she actually is I believe the only person who's turned into a vampire in the movie because the other guy they just he just killed him and drained his blood out my favorite scene the only scene in this movie that's any good is the scene uh, it's it's the ceremony scene that's ceremony the, of bloodletting that's the only scene that I think is good in this entire movie because it's creepy it's it's very uh purposeful like it it's like this specific ceremony for bringing back Dracula which I thought was cool the way that he he put his body up there and just slid it open and blood was gushing out like that's a Dracula movie and and I also like the fact that the castle there was a storm going on and that it was very dark. It added to the ominous. Yeah, it was very creepy. Okay, well, I think we should review the movie now or say what we thought. Yeah, okay? Because we've already... I reviewed it. I think it's a piece of shit. That's... Marco, that's terrible. Okay, well, this movie, and I'll say that in a snarky way, put me off as soon as the English foreigners defied advice from a thoughtful, smart priest and even fear from local villagers to enter a castle with a set table for four with a nice spread of food. And where did this lackey clove come from? And how long has he been there? And why is he doing what he is doing? And why doesn't Dracula speak? It's stupid and irritating. Marco has been researching that and whatever the reason, it's stupid. This movie ends very quickly, like it's the episode of the week, rather than a full movie. 
So I'll give it an unfinished bowl of mashed potatoes, or what people call lumpy potatoes, where there are little pieces of raw potatoes in the mashed potatoes. My biggest pet peeve, since they are so easy to make. Despite the fact there is enough butter and a tiny bit of milk and salt, which in this case represent the fine, strong actors they hired to be in the movie, the questions I raised represent the uncooked lumps in a bowl of lumpy mashed potatoes. <clears throat> I'll give this movie a, a tray of rotten deviled eggs Ooh. with uh, with ketchup all over them. <laughs> That's how bad this movie is. I, I just I don't care. I spoiled the whole movie. I don't I don't care. I mean, it's just so not worth it, the way that people hype, hype this movie up, and they overrate it, just like Infinity War. You know, both these movies are terrible, and both of them get unfair praise just because it's a certain thing. This movie, it's a Dracula movie with Christopher Lee, and that movie, it's a Marvel movie with Marvel stuff in it, so automatically... Overhype, overpraise, garbage. Now, for the rest of the series, I mean, Dr Dr Horror of Dracula is fantastic. Brides of Dracula is fantastic. Dracula has risen from the grave is fantastic. Scars of Dracula is even worse than this movie, which I don't know how that's possible. And then, uh, Taste of the Blood of Dracula is actually pretty good and then Dracula 80 1972 is the best of the series and then Satanic Rites of Dracula sucks but it has some memorable things about it so that that's my overall opinion of the series when when we watched this movie it was like a chore to watch it especially when after the I mean because it, it takes an entire half of the movie for Dracula to even come in and then when he comes in he doesn't talk he doesn't act like Dracula he just stands there like a dipshit and uh, then he falls in, in the water and dies so this movie sucks don't watch it don't uh, spend your money and watch this garbage movie Okay, well, I think that's good enough. And our, our last uh, movie in this, like, scary horror, whatever you want to call it, movie series, is The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. It's another Hammer movie, and it actually stars Christopher Lee as a different, completely different character, but he plays kind of a cad. But we'll explain that when we, when we review the movie. Okay, so uh, remember Hallmark Week after this and then guess what we're doing a Stephen King week because we feel like there's enough movies to pick from to well talk it, about. Was, it was a requested thing yeah mostly yeah, somebody uh talking was talking about it and I thought oh wow that'd be a great week I would have Stephen King week I would have prioritized doing Abbott and Costello more because he, here are some other uh, months we're thinking about we're thinking about doing Abbott and Costello we gotta do the remix month we, we didn't end up doing that this year we gotta do uh, Stephen King of course and <coughs> another one that I was thinking about was kids movies that were made by people who, who don't understand kids like kids movies that are just like this is a kids movie and I, I I was thinking about that because there's a lot of movies where <laughs> it seems like you know a lot of movies nowadays are made for kids like horror movies there's no horror movies anymore they're all for teenagers and I was thinking about like you know since everything's <laughs> for kids now why don't you actually target movies towards kids? Because most kids' movies don't show kids swearing, don't don't have kids doing anything dangerous, 
they just make kids in, into like something they're not. And it's like they think kids are dumb, or they do a lot of other things. I thought it was it would be very interesting to do that. Safi originally didn't want to do that, so if you like this idea, go to the comments and tell us about other months that you would like and our ideas for months. Okay, so that's it. Alright, bye everybody. Bye everybody. See you in a bit. <clears throat>